All right, guys, it's uh, Friday. It's at uh, 4.45, Friday, October 8th. Uh, got Mr. Ron over there, this truck over there. I'll fill you guys in tomorrow, whatever happened, but uh, I'm about an hour and a half outside Denver. I'm in Colorado, yes. Um, ended up not catching the bus. Mr. Ron was in the area and he gave me a ride, and then uh, we're going to camp here tonight on some dispersed camping, and then uh, tomorrow we'll get into Denver, and I'm getting right on the trail. Um, I'm just going to keep it short for right now. I just wanted to check in and show you the first views of Colorado. And uh, I'll check in whenever I want tomorrow and uh, fill you guys in on what's going on when I'm uh, tackling Denver, baby, in the Rocky Mountains. Just all walking around. It's at uh, like 6.15 in the morning on Saturday. Mr. Ron's just getting up, so I'll come back and fill you guys in. But good night's sleep, very windy. It's like 40 degrees. I got some of my new gear on right now, trying to warm up. Um, it was just awesome with these cattle. They were just walking through the camp, walking down. Um, a lot of coyotes out last night. It was a good night. Packing up. I got a lot of stuff to break down that I bought at Walmart yesterday on the way here. Then we're going to get on the road in a couple hours and head to Denver. I'll fill you guys in on everything. All right, 8 o'clock, guys. Uh, Friday, October 9th. I'm sorry, Saturday, October 9th, 8 o'clock. Um, just packing up. I had to pull my tent down. The wind, the wind is getting brutal up here. That's what the reviews on these places say. The wind is insane. and it was, it was rough all night, but once I had my tent open this morning, it was filling up with wind and it was pulling out the stakes. So before I lost my tent down there in the, uh, in the valley, I pulled it. Got Mr. Ron out there walking. Oh, my Zoom just disappeared, so I guess I can't zoom right now. But uh, Mr. Ron's out walking around. I'm just packing up. Beautiful camp spot with these cattle everywhere. Just super nice. I only went down to 40, so not bad temperature-wise. I had just the quilt and quilt mode, but uh, I'm going to shut up. i got to watch how much I talk as much this time because my phone's already at 50% capacity from downloading some books and all. I usually start, it's only at 30% capacity. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get videos out when and where for this next uh, you know, three weeks, so i got to really watch what I videotape. There's going to be so much I want to record for you guys and for myself, obviously, because I'm really looking forward to Colorado, but I'm going to pack up. I have so much stuff. My pack is to the top. Like, it's... Every pod's full, so I just I don't have any more room in my pack. It's, it's definitely heavier. I probably added 10 pounds in gear. Plus, I'm, I have a seven days of food in my bag right now. So it's, a, it's a big pack. All right, guys. Good afternoon. It's at 1.30 on that Saturday, October 9th. Uh, yesterday was my seventh month mark out on the trail. I don't know if I brought that up earlier. Sorry, I've been kind of just showing spots here and there. I actually wanted to get more of Mr. Ron on camera. And, uh, you know, we started talking and driving, and I forgot. But, uh... I bought a bus ticket, I think I told you guys. Um, then Mr. Ron ended up being in the area around the same time. So I just ate the bus ticket loss, hopped in the van, uh, truck with Mr. Ron. Much better than being jammed in a bus. Uh, we camped at that place I showed you guys last night and this morning. And uh, we just drove through Denver. I think the place is called Lakewood. We ate at a um, Cheesecake Factory. Had some delicious uh, Cajun shrimp jambalaya. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Ron. And then we found this state park, or not state park, but it's called Bear Creek Park. And uh, it's like $10 to come in and use it for a day anyway. I just told Mr. Ron to drop me off and he can head out and do his own thing. So he just dropped me off here. I walked back into the park on my own. And uh, I'm just looking for a spot to set up now. Uh, you can see these mountains, baby. I ain't seen mountains. And that, you know, they're not even real mountains. They call them foothills. But that's a thousand feet taller than I was at in uh, Dahui Sad's already right there. All right, guys, it's uh, 630 in the evening on uh, Saturday. Uh, October 9th. Um, I'm set up here in my tent right off the uh, Red Creek Trail, which is the trail I'm on going through on the American Discovery Trail. I'm here in uh, Red Creek Lake uh, Park. Um, it's been nice. I set up a little early, but I'm just the sun went down and it got chilly quick. Uh, someone did walk by. I'm like, I'm off the trail. The trail's on the, you can't see it here on the other side of the creek, but there's another like bike trail over here. And 
Someone was back here walking. It's the first person I've seen in the last five hours. So, um, yeah, I'll get up tomorrow early, pack up, hit the trail, and I'll uh, fill you guys in, even though I probably spotly did it, but over the last couple of small videos. But, all right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Sunday, October 10th. It's uh, about 10 after 7. Um, as you see, I got a complete mess going on here. Uh, I just made myself some uh, coffee. It's cold. Not super cold, but 40 degrees. It was a very comfortable night. Um, five hour energies are too much weight, so I had to go back to coffee with a stove and uh, for these parts back here. So I uh, probably won't be doing a coffee every morning. It really slows me up. I like to be on the road already. But I will be having a coffee at like some point, especially like before lunch, when I stop for a break or whatever to warm me up. But uh, it's going up to like 70 something today, so it's going to warm up quick once the sun peaks over these little mountains right here. Or actually, it sets over them, so wherever it peaks at over there. So. All right, 815, guys, I'm on the trail, which is uh, the Bear Creek bike trail right here. Look at the mountains. I'm uh, sitting right now at like 5,500 feet. I'm already higher right now than I've, I've been on the whole length of this trail, including uh, West Virginia. I think the highest I went in West Virginia was like 4,300. So I don't know what they are. I'm guessing that's probably like 65, maybe 7,000 uh, foot peaks. But I think I'm traversing around or through them today. Um, I'm passing a couple little towns, but the next like uh, semi-decent town I'll be getting to is Idaho Springs. I'll fill you guys in a little bit. We got some better scenery about all my new gear and stuff. I'm carrying a lot of stuff. Um, it takes me a lot longer to pack now because instead of just jamming stuff in my pods and throwing them in my pack, Everything's got to be put away uh, perfect now because my pods are just maxed out. It takes me 10 minutes to close each one. Deer just coming down the mountain, crossing the road. I don't know how well it's coming up. I can't see my phone screen. Right. Looks like a buck right there. A couple of them are small bucks. Or am I just seeing things? That one looks like a buck in the back with the wide ears. Um, I don't know kind of deer they are to be honest with you. They might be mule deer. They've got different ears. I think they're muleys. Does. They're all females. The ears are just throwing me off because I'm used to seeing white tails. Oh, look at these mountains. These are nothing. These are half, half what I'm getting into. <laughs> I'm coming up on the uh, Mount Falcon Park. I'll be cutting through it on these trails. So I'm assuming I'm going through these mountains over them. I'm not really sure. I just came from that town over there, Morrison. All right, guys, I'm at a 6,200 feet elevation, and uh, I know that's not that high. I'm going to be going double that, but I'm struggling for, uh, I feel like I'm struggling for air. A little working a little harder. That's uh, Denver, the uh, skyscrapers in the background, and that's, I believe, Morris, Morrison, Morris, Morrisonville or something like that. Red Rock Amphitheater is right around there. I'm uh, working the switchbacks, working my way up over these mountains. Uh, I want to talk about uh, food. I got enough food for, I started out with seven days. It was just too much. My pack was too full, too heavy. So I had to drop a couple days. I think I have four days of food, which I can stretch out to five. I got some good uh, dehydrated meals, so big servings. Um, water, I started the day off with three liters, which is basically all I can carry. And my pack is, uh, it's got to be around 60, 65 pounds, which is, uh, pretty heavy for me at least on this elevation um i started the day with three liters i'm already down to about two uh, i didn't see that body of water down there i would have topped off where i started to climb because i do not know when i'm going to uh, run the water all right first climb is in the books i'm at a uh, 66 89 elevation a uh, total ascent of a uh, 1200 so i believe that's the red rock amphitheater right there and then that's morris morrisonville or morrisville and then that's denver it would make sense that being the Red Rock Amphitheater, it's Red Rocks. And that looks like uh, got some parking and stuff over there. All right, 11.30, guys. I'm uh, stepping off. I got my phone up to 80. It was down to like 60 or something. I could have stayed there longer, but like four different trails on this mountain or this area converge here. It's way too crowded uh, for my liking. But it's also Sunday, so um, I'm finding that uh, I noticed it yesterday and then today packing up. I've been getting frustrated much quicker than I normally do, especially in the mornings usually good in the mornings and I think it's uh I think it's my anxiety and me being nervous about Colorado coming in front of me everyone keeps hitting me over the head with weather and it's too late in the year and then on top of that I'm having a this month is going to be my shortest month of money by far I think all that's weighing on me and I'm definitely like uh like snapping like things aren't going right I'm getting frustrated way too quick I need to relax chill out a little bit 
and just take this as it comes. I'm start, you know, I'm worrying about stuff that hasn't even happened yet. So just take it as it comes. I'm sure I'm gonna hit some bad weather. It's Colorado and it's October and I'm gonna be here to probably late November. But take it as it comes. And right now it's absolutely beautiful. You know, I have a liter and a half of water and I have no worries. So I want to mention, I also uh, put some body glide on my, uh, you know, in between my thighs and all. Cause I'm not wearing compression shorts. I got rid of them. I got rid of my Under Armour tights because I went to, uh, I got a pair of 150 um, wool, merino wool base layers and a 250. So I'll just wear them when the weather gets cold. So right now I got nothing on underneath the pants. And I also put some uh, body glide on my uh, feet. <sighs> all right, guys, it's 12.15. I'm uh, 1.04 miles in since my last break. And I just gained that uh, 900 feet of elevation in that uh, mile. <sighs> yeah. I don't know if that's a lot as far as like hikers are concerned or whatnot, but it was a lot for me. <laughs> All right, guys, just got to the top here. I'm like 72, 7,300 feet. I forget, I gotta look at my watch again, but uh, I'm down to less than a liter of water, but it is just incredible up here. Uh, I'm hot when I'm hiking. As soon as I stop, I'm freezing just because I'm soaking wet. And especially if I'm in the shade, man, it's cold. Uh, I'm down to less than a liter of water, so I gotta get some water pretty soon. I just can't stop not drinking. I'm getting like uh, headaches. And, uh, you know, a little, like, uh, lightheaded. I don't know if it's the elevation or dehydrated or the uh, the exertion or all the above, but I'm sure the elevation's getting to me. I got to get used to all of it. It's my first day out here. All right, making my way to the bathrooms. It's actually the way I was going anyway. For some reason, I thought I was making a left right there. I'm at, uh, at 7,600 feet elevation, actually. It's a little higher than I thought. All right, no water in them restrooms, guys, and there's actually no water uh, anywhere in this park as far as... As long as, at least as far as the map line. I just looked at the map. Um, I'm coming up here in the parking lot. I could ask somebody, but I'm not dying. I got a liter, or a little less than a liter. I just have to be real stingy. I'm coming up on Bear Creek again. I'll pass Bear Creek itself. Or it, it, it's, that's Creek I camped next to last night. Sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> um, so I'm assuming I can get some water from Bear Creek. That's another four miles away. All right, guys, I'm coming off the Castle Trailway, and it looks like I'm going on... I'm sorry, the uh, Castle Trail, my trailway, but I'm still in Mount Falcon Park. I'll be in here, I think, uh, for the remainder of today. I'll definitely be in here. I think tomorrow also. The Paramali Trail, is that how you say that? Um, uh, I walked across a nice family. They were just pulling up and getting all their bags ready, and I seen that he had a nice case of uh, bottled water in the back. So I swallowed my pride and uh, asked if they would mind, and uh, he threw me a bottle before I could even finish the sentence. So... Thank you very much. I know he'll probably never see this, but uh, I appreciate it. So I right, picked it up. It was just like a straw wrapper or something, but it's been so clean out here. Look at this. If I had a um, if I had a, a place to access water, I would camp up here somewhere for the day. I'd call it quits right now. <laughs> well, I'm glad I just checked my map because I'm not supposed to be on this trail. I started thinking the direction it was going. It was basically taking me back. Where I just came from, which the American Discovery Trail likes to do that, but I gotta check my map. I, I didn't see the turnoff up there in the parking lot where I'm supposed to go, so let me backtrack here this quarter mile. All right, I gotta figure it out. I figured out why I got spun around because I got some road walking here. Looks like I'm exiting the park, so I'm not gonna be in the park much more. <laughs> Look at them mountains, man. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna be cutting through like a you know a semi uh, residential area. I just passed a couple of houses in, in these nice hills. Just absolutely incredible, man. That mountains is where I need to be. All right, guys. Uh, I'm uh, just shy of 10 miles in. I'm five miles in now since then my watch resets. I think I was like four and some change in before. Uh, just stopped here at the uh, Indian Hills Volunteer Fire Department. And uh, perfect. They had a, a spigot in the back, so I got refilled. I got three liters of fluid on me now. But uh, I'm ready to shut it down. I'm not going to lie. Um... My pack weight, which I just added to, <laughs> uh, it's just, it's weighing on my shoulders. And I'm just sore in general, I can't lie. Um, all right, guys, about 10 and a half miles in, give or take. I'm not exactly sure. Like I said, my watch reset. <clears throat> um, looks like there's a trailhead coming up here. And looking at my map, it should be at Pence Park. Look at the mountains off in the distance. Ooh. I seen a couple of Snow Peak mountains earlier. I think they got snow at like 13,000 feet. All right, this is actually the Bear Creek Trail. Um, that uh see the sign right there i don't know if you guys can see it but I, that i was on earlier yesterday and this morning so i'm here i guess it went down here or something but uh my trail has me going up around here 
and then linking up with the Bear Creek right here. You can see the Bear Creek linking up with it like around here. So I don't know. I'm, I don't know why I decided to show you that, but I'm gonna uh, walk around here and try to find somewhere flat. I don't think I'm gonna find it here. It looks, it does look promising, uh, but the house is right there. But if I get into them bushes and then get up in a tree, all you can see is like the top of the house. I might hop, get over that fence. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on my phone, but there's a chain going across, like you can access it with a vehicle back there. All right, three o'clock guys. I just branched off on a trail. There's so many trails back in here in this park. I actually crossed the street and I probably should have went and looked at that because it was a lower spot. But uh, I've, plenty of people have passed me over here. I'm literally just right here on the side of the trail, which is where I'm going to sit for a while. I got to get some uh, solar solar energy. But I'm thinking maybe I could put a tent right here. Not exactly level, but um, I'm going to go walking up in there a little bit. Try to find. I just need a small little section. Uh, and for, uh, I meant to finish up earlier, but I got to go over a bunch of new gear that I got. But for those wondering, I did uh, got bear spray. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this or not already. So if I mentioned it already, I apologize. But uh, I think I did. Um, it didn't come with a uh, holster, so I got it rigged up here, and I'm just wearing it clipped to my belt here, and then I jammed the thing in my pocket, which I hate because I'm I'm losing weight, which is good, but uh, my pants are getting harder and harder to keep up. Uh, that's, I actually bought extra larges for uh, my base layers because, you know, the wool stuff, anything in the hike community usually comes extra, really tight. Like when I first started, I was double XL, and they fit me like mediums. But now the extra larges are barely holding up, so I could have went with a large, especially the weight I'm going to be losing doing all these uh, mountains, but... An extra large will hold up, at least for a little while. Um, so, yeah, I got the bear spray. I uh, hope I don't need it out here. All right, guys, 3.30. Just found out that the Eagles won today, so that's a plus, even though I'd rather see us lose many, many games this year. We have three first-round picks this year in the draft, so I want ours to be the best possible because we already know the Colts is going to be good and the Dolphins is going to be good. So all right, There's a the trail. I'm about 500 yards up from where I was at. I should probably go back and get my gear that's laying all over but I just found this area right here. I think this will work. I mean, it's not perfect, don't get me wrong, but I'm on the side of a mountain. So right here is probably the best if I put it this way. I gotta just watch this route. But even if half my tent's on that, my body can be on this. And then uh, I'll put the elevation on my head's higher than my feet. I should be fine. So this will work. Plus I can hide out here off trail way better. All right, guys, just sitting here. This is quite a popular trail. At least 15 people have passed me since I moved. I'm glad I got off that that area I was that when I was on the trail but uh, I was looking at my map and it looks like uh I hate to say this but it's like I got about 30 miles or so of road walking ahead of me um just dipping up and down in the valleys uh through the mountains on that road so all right guys it's at uh, 5 45 and uh it's cold I just finally gave in I was sitting on my mat here just shivering watching all these people walk by in shorts and everything and when you're moving I'm sure it's fine man but I am freezing so I checked the uh Check the weather, and it's giving me the weather for Evergreen, which is I'm um, coming up on the town of Evergreen. Makes sense. I'm surrounded by Evergreens, right? And uh, it says it's 46 out right now. So 46 is cold when you're not moving. It's going down to 36 tonight, and then this wind picks up. So it's going to be chilly. I actually uh, stripped down. I put my long john bottoms on the, excuse me, the 250 weight. And I just broke out my uh, puffy. I probably should put my raincoat on. It probably been better for the wind, but this was more accessible, so I just grabbed this. All right, guys, it's 6.47, and uh, in the last 40 minutes, only one guy came by, and he just came by, and it was making, he was actually running, like tra trail running, and uh, I'm like, what is that noise? Here, I'm thinking it's like a grizzly bear coming plowing down the trail or something. I grabbed my, my mace anyway. It was a guy running, so I'm, I'm going to roll the dice now and start setting up now because the winds actually stopped for a little bit. Um, I, my spot is as good as it's going to get. It's not very comfortable. I'm very slanted, but I'm putting my head up high and my feet down low. All right, guys, 7.15, I got her up. Uh, she's not up very good. I, I did something wrong. I don't know what the poles or what, but she's real, like, crooked and very tense in some spots. So I just can't figure it out. I can't. I'm not taking it all apart right now in the dark. I need to get in here, and uh, I'm all sweating because I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated way too easy. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I finally set it up right. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 5.30 a.m., uh, Monday, October 11th. Um, I'm just getting up. I uh, slept like crap, as you can see, because I'm on a slant. I'm all jammed on the bottom of my tent. Plenty of room up top. Um, oh, I went down. It's 27 degrees right now. I didn't know it was going down that cold. I should probably have my... I definitely should have my uh, water filter 
um, in my pocket. Although it's probably warmer in here, so it probably isn't 27 in my tent, right? All right, guys, 6:30. Um, I went against uh, making oatmeal just because I'd have to make, I'd have to like split, eat the oatmeal and do the coffee or put the oatmeal in a bag, whatever. So I just made one big cup of uh, coffee and I'll get on the road here. I'll tell you what, a piece of gear that I fought forever. But it, now that I have it, it's awesome. Is these pair of hot lips you put on your canteen cup. I can actually get hot water going down my throat and make me feel good without burning my lips on high titanium. So thank you, Miss Carmen. Miss Carmen sent them to me in a little uh, like care package she sent to me when I was in the hotel. Um, I still haven't gone over all my gear yet, but uh, she sent me hiking poles because I needed them. Uh, hot lips, some food. Um, she sent me a thin mat, the Gossamer Gear thin mat to go underneath my foam mat because my foam mat's only a... R2 mat, we talked about it before. So I got a little more added protection. All right, guys, 720, I'm on the move. Um, I took off my uh, 250 weight bottoms and my 250 weight hoodie, and I put on a, a 150, uh, just like crew tight, you know, regular long sleeve shirt, and I put on my bottoms. Um, I think it's going up to like 58 or something today. So I'm hoping this isn't overkill. I just have to take it slow. It's just uh, too cold right now to start with nothing. I don't know how well it's coming up, but we got some uh, mule deer up there. I believe they're mule deer. I might be telling you guys something wrong. I'm only familiar with whitetails. I'm cutting through a town here. I just passed that Bear Creek, and uh, I could probably definitely use... I mean, I definitely need water. I got a liter and a half on me, but I'm too cold. It's 28 degrees right now. And... Uh, Looks like I got antlers on that little guy. Yep, got little antlers on him. Um, it's just too cold, so I'm gonna. I uh, hope I pass a gas station down here. My map, uh, my map does say uh, gas, water, and whatever coming up. But as I pass so far as this cafe and tavern, and I don't want to go in there and uh, ask for water. So hopefully it doesn't bite me in the butt. I probably... All right, still walking. Um, I passed that creek again, but I was up high. Um, I'm kicking myself. I should have just sucked it up and uh, got that water out of that creek because that might come back and bite me in my rear. Um, all right, guys, I'm at uh, 4.12 miles in, and I'm not passing up this water source. So I'm going to uh, hop the little barbed wire fence right there, work my way down, and then uh, get some water in there. And I'm probably not going to filter. I don't, don't want to run my filter through. Uh, it's too cold out still. I think it would be fine if I keep it in my pocket, but keep it dry as long as I can. So I think I'm just going to fill my bottle up and put drops in it and then call it a day. All right, guys, it's uh, 10 o'clock. Just leaving my little brick area there. Um, I got uh, two and a half, a little more than two and a half liters of water. Uh, maybe I should have topped off the other one, but uh, I already had Gatorade in it. So um, on the move, good little stop. I got like a half hour worth of uh, solar into my phone. All right, guys, I'm uh, seven miles in. I'm uh, 76. 7,678 feet in the air. And it's a quarter after 11. Oh, um, it's beautiful up here. Look at this. It looks like I'm only uh, less than two miles away from uh, Bergen Park. Um, so that might be where I call it for the day if it works out. But uh, more excitingly, it's, my map says all services there. So hopefully I can grab that. Uh, couple drinks and some snacks because i got i got enough food for i think i still have free i got four dinners left but the problem is with these dinners they all got to be cooked and i'm like more sometimes i'm just not feeling it at the end of the day so and it's too much to eat for lunch so pretty much these last couple days i just been eating all my like loose stuff that i can just shovel down my throat like the hog that i am i came from all the way over there the road weaved it around came up now, some serious road walking. All right, guys, I'm inside of a super shopper. Uh, just picking up some food here. I know I'm getting ready to hit, uh, like, after, after Idaho Springs doesn't have as much as I thought it did. So I'm going to grab some stuff here because I'm going to be getting ready to spend a couple days on the Continental Divide Trail. So, All right, guys, it's at 1245, I think. Hold on. Sorry, I forgot that quick. Yep, 1245. I'm at 8.77 miles in. Just left the... Uh, the King Shopper, Scooper, Super, King Super, something. I don't know. I can't read. And I'm about to get hit by cars. King Supers. Anyway, very confusing supermarket because I've never seen them like this where you have to 
leave your cart full of stuff there and then the lady pulls it through so i'm trying to unload the stuff she's like you can't be back here sir so anyway i stocked up on a i'm way over stocked on fluids because my plan is to hit this park coming up and then hopefully camp there for the day hide somewhere get electricity and camp and just call it a day and then uh hit the road tomorrow full and then i i got a i have plenty of dinners but i bought stuff like spams and fruit by the foot and uh some cliff bars and stuff you know nonsense that i can eat on the go all right guys it's at one o'clock i'm here at that bergen park in it's a park inside of bergen park the township <laughs> uh, um it's 25 acres this park and it's got this trail called the pioneer trail that runs through it so looking right now it doesn't look good that i'll be able to camp somewhere but I haven't ventured around yet, so I'm gonna go down here and check to see if there's electricity, which I highly doubt it. But if either way, I gotta get solar going. All right, guys, it's at 220. I got the uh, the 150 uh, thin wool base layer on and my hat. When you're in the shade, it's cold. It's uh, like 54, but in the shade and the wind, you get a little chilly when they're not moving. Um, I'm getting some solar over there, as you can see. I'm uh, trying to get my phone on. My phone was on for an hour and a half. It's still only at 80%, so. I'm gonna use my phone for a little bit. I got my battery bank in there. I'm gonna stay at all about 5.30, I think. No camping here, it's not gonna happen. First of all, it's very popular and it's just very sparse woods and the trail zigzagging in and out. Um, I'm gonna go on that road there, go down about a mile and then that this chunk of wood start. It's some kind of conservative easement. So I'm hoping it's flattish because that's where I'm walking and it begins around a mile away and it continues for like a couple miles. So hopefully I can get in there. That's the plan. I'm going to stay here until 5, 5.30, then hit the road. Um, show you guys what I'm working with for food. Just how I break it down. Um, I got one, two, three, four, five full days here I, by my count. So breakfast, two oatmeal packets, a snack, a two peanut butter packet snack, two what nonsense snacks, and then a big dinner. Same thing here. It's set up at the same every day. Uh, breakfast snacks dinner and then i got a uh, spam singles to throw in there i got some uh, spearmint tea which i just got uh, cappuccinos and lattes i usually mix a latte with a cappuccino in the morning uh, these things which i didn't i didn't i usually get kool-aid because they have real sugar so i usually don't like the taste of the fake nonsense but uh these are really good the uh the gatorade zero packets um got some hot sauce some salt and pepper some other uh, juice drinks so i try not to abuse these too much because you know if you go heavy on two days and you don't drink any water then you don't got nothing later on the line. So I try to limit myself to just uh, two containers a day, which is actually four packets, because I put two of these in per uh, liter. It's supposed to be one for 20 ounce. I put two in there for every liter, so a little stronger. And then, like I said, I got some extra spams. Now, usually what ends up happening is, um, I won't eat this too much hot. I'll just like dump it in my mouth and swallow it with water. But I'll end up eating all these and then eating tomorrow's version. And then, so all this middle stuff will run out fast. And then I'll have the top and the bottom. It's just, at the end of the day, or even in the morning, uh, making coffee is one thing. And then uh, making something else, I got to do another Isbit tablet. All right, guys, it's 440. I'm leaving the park. Um, I was getting solar. I got it for like, I don't know, three and a half hours and had my phone up to 90. It's already down to 75. So it's just a... Uh, it's like a losing battle with the solar to keep it up. But I got some into my battery bank. I just got to get a little, I got to get a lot more discipline with this uh, electricity. Um, with... This is unreal. I think they got to be elk guys, that's huge. How awesome was that? Um, yeah, that, they were elk. I mean, that, they are elk. That's a lot of them. Three bulls. Whew, wow. Well, this is where I'm looking at getting somewhere in here to camp. It's uh, it's open space, whatever that means. But it's it's a park, and you can see bikers riding the trail. So like somewhere up in them uh, yellow trees, whatever they are. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Just got to find a way to get in. I don't know how all these people are in there. All right, well, I could hop the fence and just walk across this huge open space, but it looks like another mile and a half up. There's some roads that cut in, so I'm just going to shoot for that. I'm still finding myself getting frustrated 
when little little dumb things go wrong. I was just trying. I just took my wool top off and I was trying to put my shirt on. And, whew, I'm out of breath. My phone was in my pocket and it wouldn't go on. I'm just. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I think I'm just. Uh, a lot. A lot went on my mind. I'm worrying about. Well, what I'm getting myself into. Everyone keeps telling me this and that, and uh, it's starting to beat me up. I'm starting to stress about well weather, and uh, you know. Uh, I'm just out here. I have no other choices. So, you know, if I get beat up and I'm cold and wet and I, I have no other choices but to keep going on. I can't go get a hotel room and dry off and charge everything up. So I think I'm just stressing out a little. I need to just relax. I'm worrying about stuff that hasn't even happened yet. Whew. All right, what it looks like is uh, it's private property and then it runs up into the easement after it. So I can't access it. It looks like I got another mile and a half or so to go. And then it looks like I get some more of a, like, a park area like I was just at. So hopefully I can squeeze in there. Because I was not planning on doing three or four extra miles. All right, guys. It's uh, 5.45. Um, the Denver Parks is right here to the left of me. Um, it was a fire road going up in there. And uh, if, it, if it was later in the night, I would have just walked up the fire road and laid down uh, an extreme... Uh, slant if I had to but it said that the following activities are prohibited pretty much everything hunting camping everything although it didn't say hiking um I got like another half mile to go until it looks like I get to like a trail system back into the park well this is shitty but I have no choice it's just the trail uh, nice gentleman just stopped to make sure I was okay and I just happened to look up and I'm uh, literally right here so it looks like I'm going straight up. The second I find anything half decent, I'm taking it. All right, I had to drop the pack because I'm, oh man, I just touched my back and I jumped it. So I'm soaking wet and the temperature's dropping quick. It, literally, as soon as that sun went in, I regretted taking off my uh, merino wool. Now I'm just soaked and the temperatures are dropping. I don't know how well it's coming up, but it's like a bunch of boulders. Like, you know, it can make like little caves and make a perfect place for a... Uh, bears to crawl into and den up for the day oh. <laughs> hey. all right the road's right there as you can see right on that turn so people are going to be able to see me um i don't know how much at night probably not much at all at night <laughs> but uh, i don't have a great spot at all guys but i cleared this out the best bet would but honestly to beat that uh <clears throat> tp down and sleep right next to that tree but it's a little small so I got a flat spot. It probably doesn't look bad on camera, but it's bad. It's lumpy, and it, depending on where I'm, I'm either going to put my head up about a foot higher than my feet, or I'm going to try to fit it long ways right in here and then just be squished down to the side a little here. All right, guys, it's 7 o'clock. Oh, shit, traffic's going on. Oh, 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 I don't want that light on. Road's right there. You probably saw. My patience is just gone. I'm sitting there screaming, flipping. The bear spray's falling out of my pocket. I'm sliding all over the tent. It's going to be a long night. I swallowed two spams here. Probably not the smartest thing to do, but I was starving and I didn't want to eat before I got in my tent. What's the difference if I go 10 yards away? I don't know. I'm just having one of them nights. This is not a good spot. Oh, so many lumps. I hope I got rid of the hard stuff. I hope I'm not ripping this bottom. At least I got the ground sheet on. I just want to camp in some regular camping spots for once. Right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, October 12th. It's uh, 5.55. Oh man, I wish you guys could see how slanted this is. Um, I actually slept way better than I should have for being in there. I actually can see it. It's pretty slanted. <laughs> um, I slept way better than I should have for how the setup was. But uh, not a great night, but like I said, better than I should have. So um, I don't have phone service right here. Uh, but I'm guessing it's in the 20s. It's cold. Uh, colder than it was yesterday. So... Um, I'm going to force myself to get out of here, get dressed, and then uh, probably have a cup of coffee. And then uh, it's time to get at it. That's... All right, guys, it's 7 o'clock. I'm just packing up here. I don't know if I showed this well yesterday, but I was basically sleeping here. I mean, it was it's the runoff from the mountains. It goes right down into the road. Uh, not very comfortable, but uh, it worked. Um, I got some service for a minute. It says it's at 
it says it's like 30 and feels like 27. I believe it. I, I feel colder today than I was yesterday. But I still haven't, uh, I had to zip my quilt up into my bag mode like I did the other night. But uh, I still didn't have my puffy on, my rain gear on, my fleece on. And I didn't have to uh, use my um, sleeping bag liner. So I'm getting down in the upper 20s with just utilizing basic stuff. So that that's pretty good. All right, good morning, guys. It's 8.30. I'm um, just starting out. I just left the trail about, uh, well, 0 0.15 miles ago. And then uh, right up the road, there was this. So I probably should have came up looking a little longer. Um, it might have been a little easier. Like, it looks like it flattens up right up there. Um, I should have tried that out. But and my map did say uh, the road I was looking for was 800 feet ahead or something like that. So, But usually it's a little off. So I just figured it was that trail. Right down there would have been good. Um, this elevation's already getting to me. I got my uh, thin base layers on. Everything else is packed away. It looks like we're going to get some rain later on today. Uh, today's uh, October 12th, and I thought the date uh, sounded familiar to me. And today's the day that the uh, USS Cole was bombed. Oh, it's snowing out. <laughs> Look at that. It's a little flurries. Um, USS Cole was bombed on this date out uh, in Aden, Yemen, by, uh, I believe, I might get these numbers I'm giving you might be wrong, but I believe two people on a boat, like a little. You know, like, a, I don't know, Johnny, but a little raft, little, uh, you know, a skiff or something. Pulled up to the coal and then blew a hole in the side of it. Uh, killing 17, including the two attackers. And I believe injuring somewhere around 37. Um, I just happened to be on Westpac, which is when Marines float around the ocean waiting for something to happen so we can be there. Like America's 911 force. And I was in Seychelles, a little uh, beautiful island town. And I was drinking rum and eating pizza at like nine in the morning and it was like a scene from a movie um short patrols running around telling everyone to get back to the ship get back to the ship we're being deployed blah blah, blah. like we don't you know it was literally like a scene from you seen a movie so i swallowed a couple more sips of rum and then i went back to the ship i don't want to say that day that night or maybe the following morning we were gone we were out of port heading towards uh aden yemen and we were there, I have no clue, I don't remember, but a couple days, it was fast. And uh, Fast Company was there, which is uh, the Marine Corps' fleet anti-security terrorism team or something like that. Um, so they were there initially setting up security. It was just anchored right off the uh, like port um, in Aden, Yemen. Anyway, we got there and we set up uh, security on there. And I was... Uh, I manned a machine gun with uh, my uh, guy actually on the machine gun was Sandoval. I was a team leader, but my whole squad was on there. So Sandone, I know he watches this. He was running a machine gun, I believe, with Pendleton, another guy. I don't know if he watches my videos or not, but I follow him on Instagram. Um, and then some of our uh, unit, some of our company would uh, go in, in town and, and, work, and basically do security at a hotel where the FBI was at. So, um, it was the first time I smelt, uh, it's going to get a little graphic, but, uh, it was the first time I smelt like burnt flesh. I remember I was getting nauseous and I was like, oh man, I can't get sick. I'm a team leader here, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was a young corporal at the time. Um, first time corporal. <laughs> I'd be a corporal a couple more times, but, uh. Um, yeah, it was that uh, you could smell the burnt flesh and just the, the burnt stuff mixed in with pine salt that the Navy uses. And uh, people don't even know about this terrorist attack. And you know, like I said, it killed uh, 15 uh, sailors, uh, two terrorists, and injured 37. Like I said, the numbers might be a little off, but I believe they're correct. Um, so we stood post. What I figured out what we were going to do. Um, we had like a Navy SEAL next to us. I remember the Navy SEAL was playing around with his uh, law, which is like a disposable, uh, like anti-tank weapon. It shoots basically like a grenade, kind of. I don't want to get too uh, in detail here, but <laughs> he pulled the pin out of it. And he's like, oh, he's like, hey, uh, can you help me put the pin back in this? And I was like, hell no, I'm not coming near that thing, nut. Anyway, he ended up getting the pin in. Um, we stood security. I, I want to say for a couple weeks, that might be an exaggeration. I don't remember the time frame, but then uh, as it got towed to sea, because it was going to get towed back to uh, 
a port in America to have uh, work done to it or um, figure out what they're going to do with it. I believe they uh, fixed it and recommissioned it. But uh, as it got towed out, it was like this big ship and these walls float down so the ship can come on it and then the side walls would raise back up. Anyway, uh, when it got towed out to sea, I was actually Corporal of the Guard. And uh, Sandone, as I mentioned, he was that man in a machine gun. I believe so was Sandoval and Pendleton. Uh, Miller, another guy I work with who actually uh, uh, fought on that UFC fight show, uh, The Ultimate Fighter. I think he was in the first one or the, sec the second one. The second one, maybe? Um, but anyway, yeah, so I was a corporal of the guard as the coal got towed, uh, towed out to sea. And then, uh, when we, you know, as it was far enough away and it was on this little tow craft or whatever it was, it was towing it back on um, a naval vessel. We well, yeah, went back to ship and continued our Westpac, so... Here's a little history. Um, you know, I, I didn't do nothing special. I just happened to be in the unit that was on Westpac, so we responded there. But, well, I decided to walk on this side because this side has actually a bike lane, a nice little shoulder area, as opposed to the other side. It literally has no shoulder spots. Um, I hate walking with the traffic coming up behind me because I literally, I'm at the mercy of everyone driving. But it just feels safer because there's so many turns up here. There's times I'm walking, like over there coming up, it's just, there's actually a little shoulder there, but there's times I'm walking, there's no shoulder and the cars are coming flying around. So I think this is probably, whew, man, salvation there. This is probably the safer bet for me. All right, guys, it's 1140. I'm uh, six miles in and I am uh, 9164 in elevation. I've gained that 1347 today. It's just been straight uphill. Um, just shy of six miles, like 5.8 something. Uh, I haven't been doing much filming just because I'm, I'm dying. <laughs> um, I took one other break on the side of the road. I'm going to take a little one here. It's been that. Uh, we're getting sopped in here with the uh, clouds. It looks wet. So it looks like rain's coming. Um, last time I had service, which I think I just got service now by looking at my phone just now. Um, rain was coming around one. But I'll check because I'm getting higher up. So maybe that rain might be snow. Well, but just got the weather and it's calling for rain right now, 12 to 3, and it just started flurrying. So, and I can disguise look like it. So, I'm going to bust out my rain gear. I don't, look, guys, I started walking away. I made about a quarter mile and then I backtracked to here because uh, it's just coming down and laying quick. The temperature dropped. Like, my hands are just huh, frozen. Um, the, these wood trees mittens don't do nothing. I can't grip anything with them. So, I got to leave the regular gloves on. And, man, my hands are frozen. So, I'm just going to put the tent up here, even though. Cars have been pulling in there. I have no choice. I just don't feel safe walking on the road. And this is supposed to keep up for the next three hours. And, you know, I might get a couple inches out of that. And uh, the temperatures are telling me it's like 37. There's no way it's 37. I mean, 37 closest town maybe where it's registering, but not 37 up here. It's, it's cold. All right, got everything set up. But as you can see, everything's wet. So I'm bringing in wet stuff into my tent. Plus, it's coming down so quick. I can't believe it. Like, before I even got the screen on, my inside tent was already covered, so I'm gonna have to be dealing with some wetness. There's just no way around it, and there's no point in me hurrying now because everything's already covered, so. All right, guys, I'm inside. As you can see, I'm dealing with some moisture. I guess that's underneath me melting through, coming through. Uh, obviously, there's snow in here from me coming in and from coming off here, but, I mean, it's it's all I can do. It. I mean, I and before, you know, I catch a bunch of shit in the comments. Uh, it's only gonna be a couple inches, I guess. Uh, someone that lives in the area just text me. He said at my elevation, I might get three or four inches. Um, then tomorrow looks good. Then Thursday, another storm. And then it would look good for another week. But uh, I just, uh, you know, before everyone goes, oh, it's only, I know it's not a lot of snow. But it only takes, as you see, this little dusting for everything to get wet. And now I'm going to have to deal with these temperatures wet. Like my rain gear's in here and it's just soaked. I got the, my feet on the inside of it. It's just, I mean, I, I, where do you put all the wet stuff at? I got to pull some stuff out of my pack. It's just kind of sitting there right now. Ah, Colorado, baby. All right, guys, it's at 20 after 2. I'm uh, in here literally freezing. I got everything I own on except, well, no, I still have a fleece. My rain gear's not on. I got on uh, both sets of thermals, uh, three pairs of socks, two regular, and then these seal skins because the bottom is kind of wet down there. Um, I had to break out my, I'm getting ready to cover up my sleeping bag, even though I didn't want it to get wet. You can see the ground. It's not really wet, but it's from underneath, so it's damp. I just, it, it's probably going to transfer to the down pretty easily. But uh, she stopped snowing. Um, now, next thing we got to deal with is uh, right now, 
for uh, Evergreen, which is the closest town. It says it feels like it's 22 out, which is not good. It's cold. <laughs> but the wind right now is only 9 miles an hour. It's going to pick up to 30 miles an hour overnight. And that's not going to be fun, especially because I don't have this tent exactly yet. <laughs> So that's what we got what a matter of you know less than two hours which is nothing but it's enough to make everything wet and miserable all right 4 30 guys um i got so cold in here because of the wind coming and i went out and like laid a bunch of logs all around the outside of my tent and put snow banks up i'm trying to cut down the wind as much as possible so that's the only little spot i can get in but i gotta keep that open because well i come in and out of there <laughs> uh, i got my liner out the first time i'm losing my liner it's it's just cold because I'm laying on wet stuff and I only have a foam mat. Thank God Miss Carmen sent me that uh, thin mat because that adds an extra half of an R value. I know that's not a lot, but it's a lot when you need it. <laughs> All right, guys, it's six o'clock. Just trying to show you what I got going on here. Um, I, I think I think I'm getting freezing cold. One is because the wind's hitting me and everything's damp, but I think it's because I'm I'm laying. If you look underneath this mat, it's like actual wood, or not just this where it looks wet. It's water there. I mean, that's wet from all the snow melting off and everything. So I think uh, I just don't have enough cushion beneath me to deal with the cold. I think you're supposed to have like an R value of five or something in the winter. So I have an R value of, uh, I think, three right here. <laughs> Seven o'clock, guys. And uh, uh, I'm not so warm anymore. It's so windy right now. I mean... I know you can't see nothing, but I hope maybe you can hear it. The tent's jumping. And now I, I'm cramping up in my legs. I guess I'm dehydrated because I haven't been drinking that much. Oh, man. All right, reposition my pack. I'm trying to block as much of the wind as possible, but I got logs on the outside on my on my uh, rain fly. I just, I can't have something go wrong with this tent tonight. I mean, I'll literally be screwed. I mean, it, it's, it'll, be, um, it'll be too dangerous. Oh. 30 mile an hour winds and it feels like it's 20 degrees out, that's a problem. Well, it's, uh, oh, that's not going to come up. Well, it's 8 o'clock and uh, it's just snowing in here because I guess all the condensation and then the wind's beating it off and then it's falling on me. A lot of it's coming from that. I don't know how that's coming through there. It's a lot of ice. It's, uh, it's just, and then the snow's blowing in from the outside. Up to the net. It's just, uh, everything's frozen, man. My gloves I had laying out, they're frozen. Everything's frozen. It's cold, guys. I'm miserable. I'm cold, and I gotta do this again for the next three nights. It's gonna be like this. Alright, guys. 2 a.m., and it's, uh, super windy. Um, I was doing pretty good on the warm. I just started getting cold, and I just realized this emergency blanket, I'm just soaked. I am literally soaked, which means everything in here, uh, I'm, I'm okay on the inside, it's just the outside's wet, uh, gets from the condensation from the emergency blanket, so I'm wet, I'm dry on the inside, so I'm going to try to let this dry off now on this wind, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to take it, because that emergency blanket's protecting me from the wind, <laughs> so uh, it's just one of them things that had to be done, but man, this tent just feels like it's going to get ripped up, and the wind's getting ready to go up to a... Uh, 35 miles an hour here another hour and more snow's coming right now uh, 2 30 guys i'm uh i've been noticing that when i have my uh things pulled up and i'm tucked away underneath i'm having trouble breathing i feel like i'm having trouble getting oxygen and then uh it leads to almost like a panic attack i'm trying to calm myself down but i got to be out in the cold here to get i feel like i'm getting enough air it's a uh, it's a shitty feeling this whole situation is pretty shitty right now. Um, like I said, I'm wet from condensation and everything. That's I thought maybe I should leave this blanket off, but that wasn't a good choice at 2 in the morning because it's just freezing over, so i got to stay covered up. I just got to get through to the morning and then uh, worry about it then. So i got like another, uh, what, 2.30? Um, 7. Like 5 hours or so to get through. And then it's just going to be a real shit show packing up. I'm running low on power already. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing so hot. Just trying to show you guys the good with the bad. And uh, I think it says it's uh, 15 degrees out on my phone last time I checked. I'm going to check again. All right. All 
right, it says the real field temps 12 degrees outside. And right now I'm dealing with 35 mile an hour wind steel. So I'm just trying to take some deep breaths here and get my breathing under. I just, I want to be under the covers. I just, I don't know. What a shitty situation. Oh man. It's at 3.30 in the morning. And this wind is about 40 miles an hour and it's almost caving in my tent. As you can see, it's snowing in here already. It's uh, about, it says it feels like 12 degrees. Fun times, yeah, this is fun times. All right guys, it's 3.30 in the morning and this wind is really picking up. It's literally snowing in here now. I'm just covered in ice and snow. I just, my tent is gonna collapse any minute. I mean, it's, oh, it just did, it just did, it just did. Oh. Yeah, I, I think I gotta get, Jesus Christ. Excuse my language. Oh, I might have to get the F out. I don't know, but what do I do if I get out of here? I can't pack up in this. It's way too bad. Because I'm gonna sit here with my back to it and get wet. Oh, this is bad, guys. This is bad. All right, guys, it's 3.45 a.m. Um, I just had to go outside and spend about a half hour out there running guidelines from my tent to like some down logs and stuff I found because my tent was just caving in on me. Um, there's snow everywhere in here now. I don't know how well it's coming up, but we were doing pretty good. But now besides what was blowing in here, up, my, with my fatness coming in and out, it was just blowing in. I tried to tape down this flap. The tape is so cold it's not working. It's not even sticky. So now I super glued it and that worked for about a second. I just got snow blowing into my air vent flap. It's a, it's a mess, and it's not even snowing out. It's just windy. These got to be over 40 mile an hour winds, and I'm in the worst place in the world for that. And it's going to be like that. It's supposed to die down a little bit to like 30 in a couple of hours, but it's going to be hard to pack up in this. All right, 4.30, guys, and uh, I'm sitting up with my all my weight to the back, pushing against it. And the tent's still almost doubling over when I get these good gusts. Ah. I'm just going to try to wait till uh, uh, probably 8. Well, I'm probably getting out at 7 though. I just want some light before I start packing in this wind. I'm not going to worry about drying anything off yet. I'm just going to walk. It's going to take me a lot longer to walk 6 miles in this wind than it would normally. So I'm just going to walk. And then uh, get to town, and then uh, worry about drying my stuff out there. This, this absolutely blows. All right, guys, it's 5:15 a.m. Uh, it's freezing out, super windy, as you can see. Uh, just getting like super anxious in the tent. I'm telling you, it's hard to breathe, man. You, and then when you got this on, it's harder. And then when I start feeling like the anxiety. It's everything I can do to not just start freaking out and crying or curling up in a wall or smashing my head against something. I don't know. So I have to get out here and walk around a little bit. You can see what I got going on at the tent. I got it tied out there. There. It's just the wind's pretty much coming in here. I can't keep this down. I got to try gluing and everything, but uh, it's, it's all right now. Most of the snow's blown away, so it's just cold wind now. But this is holding up pretty good. Uh, I mean, it. it, it, it it's, you know, these tents aren't me meant for this. All right, guys, it's quarter to six. I'm uh, packing up. I'm getting dressed. I'm just debating on how many warming layers I should put on because it is, it's like 20 degrees out. It's pretty cold. It's a little colder than that with the wind and everything. So, but it's going to warm up hopefully quickly. I just can't sit in this tent anymore. I'm, I'm about to have a panic attack or something. I just can't do it. I got to get out of here. I got to move at least. But this wind is going to oh, suck out there too. So, oh, well. All right, six o'clock, guys. I'm, I got dressed and what I think I'm gonna wear, and uh, I'm freezing already. My hands are just ice cold. I can't even use them. I'm gonna have to get back in the tent, probably till daylight. There's too much ice out here for me to be walking in in the dark. Oh. oh my god, it's so bad in here right now. Oh. Oh my god, the tent's collapsed on me. I gotta tie it off. Oh. Well, guys, I, I really don't know what to do. I'm just, uh, I don't know. Just hoping this tent holds right now. If not, I'm going to be losing a lot of gear. 
I should probably start trying to pack up the best I can, just in case this does blow. Yeah. All right, 6.45, guys. I pretty much got everything packed inside here. I just got to jam it into my pack, and then I got to somehow get this tent down. Um, it's freezing cold. Uh, I hope the sun comes up. The wind's supposed to die down by like five miles an hour, but it's not happening. Um, there's no way they're saying this is 31 miles an hour. It's way more than that. Oh, boy. Guys, 28 to 7. Um, I got packed up. That was an experience to say the least. I'm pretty sure I dented it. Two of my tent poles are bent the wrong way. Um, I had to cut two lines because I couldn't I couldn't untie them with all the wind and sit there. I had to cut them, so it's a complete mess. Everything's just jammed in my pack, and, which you know, not properly, but it's packed. I'm gonna add probably won't do much filming because of the wind. But uh, my goal is Idaho Springs. It's about seven miles, but it's all elevation and walking in 35, 40 mile an hour winds. All right, half mile in, guys. I'm starting to dip down. I hope it can, continues to go down for a while because I know the next town I'm going to is about 2,000 feet less elevation. Hope I don't dip down and go up, then go down again. But uh, I need to get goggles. Goggles is on the gear list because uh, I'm getting beat up with like the gravel. This wind is picking up and throwing in my face. All right. Uh, the same guy that stopped me uh, two nights ago when I was heading off and I had a camp right on the side of the road in that little drainage ditch, he stopped me if I was, if I was all right. He just stopped me again. He's like, bro, I just seen you like eight miles ago. I'm like, I know. I was only like seven or eight miles into my hike yesterday and the weather hit. He's like, yeah, you don't want to be on these roads when that's coming down like that. Eh. Not that it's, you know, it's just because the roads get slippery and they're windy. So I think I made the right choice. He's like, you're crazy. He's like, nobody walks these roads. <laughs> God, that wind whipping that stuff up my face. All right, I'm entering a old little Bear Creek Road or something like that, and it's an old mountain coal road. And as you can see, it's not going to be a good road. <laughs> so I got to uh, pay attention here. I might be slipping and sliding and falling. All right, guys, I'm uh, 3.09 miles in. It's slow going on these roads. A lot of it's downhill, but it's icy, so I'm going real slow. Do not trust your GPS. Turn around now. <laughs> All right, guys, took a little break back there. I filtered some water. Um, I just used the aqua mirror drops. One, I probably don't even have to filter that water at all. I mean, I'm in the mountains. I'm 9,000 feet up in Colorado, but I used aqua mirror. I didn't want to use the filter because I just, I don't know, man. I just, it's, it's been in my pocket or, and I actually haven't used it yet, but I'm pretty sure I probably used it when I first got it just to test it out. That's just what I normally do. So I just, it's been so cold, I'm afraid it got, you know, it froze. Even last night in the tent, first I had it in my pillow. I was like, ah, oh, it'll be good. I'm resting on it. It'll get some body heat. And then I moved it from the pillow, and I just put it in my sleeping bag, and I ended up putting it in a pocket inside my sleeping bag. I had my, uh, dry, uh, water, my Gatorades in my sleeping bag with me, too, last night, but that just got to be too much in that little thing. So I, I left them out, and they froze up quick. Not What's that uh, TikTok or Instagram? Money doesn't impress me. Followers don't impress me. You know what impresses me? Rocks and rock formations. Pretty good, huh? Man, I'm only 4.79 miles in. If I would've just walked a couple more miles yesterday, I would've found so many better camping spots that would've been well protected from the wind. Uh, all right, it's 10.45, guys. I'm at 6.35 miles in. I'm 
rolling up on to Idaho Springs, Colorado. All right, it's a, uh, it's like a cute little town, like a little, uh, little preppy, I guess I would say. You know, a lot of knickknacks. Uh, what are they called? Uh, you know, little lodges and bed and breakfast and stuff. This place is tiny, right? And it's got like I think three medical marijuana dispensaries in here. <laughs> um, I guess it's popular because uh, they have hot springs in here in Idaho Springs. So they got some hot springs somewhere. See a bunch of breweries. Looks like they're getting ready to shut this down. Ooh, kegs. Sounds nice. Not today, not today. All right, well, I just left the public library. I have no pack on. I met a nice uh, the librarian in there. Told her what I was doing and uh, asked her if it would be okay if I uh, stayed in the corner for a couple hours and just got some power, maybe read a book. Probably not going to read a book. I would like to try to get a video out while I'm here, but I'm definitely going to get some power because my one power bank is dead. And uh, I'm getting ready to get into that stuff uh, tomorrow, or I'm, I might be camping close by, but I will be on the Continental Divide Trail here in the next day or two. So, all right, I'm going in to come and go. All right, it's 20 after one, guys. I'm uh, just walking through the town. I got all my gear just left in the library. I doubt anyone's going to the library to steal it, at least. <laughs> no one's been in there since. And people are very nice. I'm um, just cruising around, just drank a Starbucks. Um, I'm going to try to upload a video here, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time because I can't stay here forever. I, I kind of told her two hours. And it's already been an hour. I got my gear completely dried out. Um, completely repacked, so I'm ready to roll. Uh, I don't know really where I'm camping at. As you can see, I'm surrounded by mountains, so I don't want to have to walk to the top. I don't want to be on the top of one of them anyway because we have a storm rolling in tomorrow. And it's supposed to be windy again tonight, so... But uh, I'm going to try to put together a video and see what it says. I got really good service here, 5G, so who knows? Maybe we'll get one out. Maybe I'll be camping close enough, but uh, I'm getting power, so that's good. So I should, I should definitely get a video out while I'm here. I'm going to try. All right, coming on the library.